Hey everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Mom Show. Thank you for joining me again. I'm so excited to welcome you in season four, episode two. Happy, happy new year. If you missed my previous episode, go back to episode one as I talk about how to be your best you in 2022 as we launch into this new year. It's been a crazy couple of years, but you know what? We're still here. It's such a blessing. God has kept us and we're so happy that even if you have been sick or you haven't, you know, at the end of the day, God is still keeping you. So I am so grateful for that, that my family and everybody has overall been doing well. So today, I just have a fantastic topic to talk about. But before we go into that, I just want to remind you that the Dr. Mom Show is a medical informational resource. It does not take the place of your physician or your child's physician. So seek your medical advice or your child's medical advice exclusively from your physician or your child's physician. So again, the topic I'm talking about today is about postpartum depression. Now, it's not just about any postpartum depression, which we have heard about in moms. Today, I am talking about postpartum depression can happen in dads too. Yes, you heard me right. That's exactly what I said. Postpartum depression can happen in dads too. So first of all, with the pandemic, we all know that we have seen an unfortunate rise in depression, anxiety, substance abuse, alcohol abuse, just suicide rates. I mean, it's been awful. Just with the isolation, the restrictions, precautions, people not being able to see their friends and family, not getting that normal activity that we're used to. You know, now there's like a new normal for some things where For example, you're masking, you're keeping a certain distance. If you have kids who aren't necessarily in a higher grade, but maybe in like daycare or preschool, I remember when everything was going on, um, you couldn't go into the school. You have to just drop your kid off and (laughs) just hope that they make it in there and do okay, which they have, you know, shout out to all those teachers out there. Um, But definitely there is that new normal. So mental health is something that has always had somewhat of a stigma, right? You know, different cultures, different times, just different things have played a role in mental health and there being a stigma. So for example, if you bring up a therapist, psychologist, a psychiatrist, anybody, you know, the first thing that people say is, I don't want to see a shrink. I don't want people to think I'm crazy. And I feel now people are seeing more and more that that's not what is meant when, as a physician, we recommend that somebody sees a therapist or a counselor or a psychiatrist. You know, we're really looking out for the person's mental health. But there's been that stigma. And thank goodness that, you know, in light of everything that's happened, this stigma has really improved or this like myth has really improved as more and more people have become educated and as more cases have arisen with the pandemic. So, I mean, unfortunately, it took more cases coming through, but with the more cases in the pandemic that we've seen, that rise in cases have caused people to become more educated about it because again, we have seen depression and anxiety just increase in not only in adults, but also in kids. So it has really become a hot topic. But one thing that I personally feel that's been left out is postpartum depression. And can you imagine being pregnant during this time, like knowing that you have to protect yourself, you have to protect your baby, you have to do well, take care of yourself so that you're body can do awesome during your pregnancy and during your delivery and keeping people safe. And then just the change in visitor policies. And, you know, the visitor policies at the hospital are really for safety so that mom is safe, so that other babies are safe, so that the baby who is in your family is safe. I mean, just a lot, a lot of policies going on. But at the end of the day is really for the safety of everyone around us. So again, so imagine going through all of that and having your baby being under the pressure, then, you know, most moms want to breastfeed. So then that's a lot of pressure. It's a whole nother show altogether. But postpartum depression is one thing that a lot of people haven't spoken about, much less postpartum depression in guys. 
right? That's what I'm talking about. So first of all, we know that guys either show their emotion or not. Most guys probably don't necessarily show their emotion. Sometimes some guys, again, going back to culture and society and social media and things like that, you know, build this framework of this expectation that, you know, all guys should just be tough. Guys shouldn't cry. Guys shouldn't like share their emotions. Like if a woman is going through a hard time, that's the shoulder that, you know, she leans on, which is, I mean, which is awesome. We all need a shoulder to lean on. But remember, even if you are a guy, sometimes remember if there's a guy in your life, sometimes that guy may also need a shoulder to lean on. So today I really just wanted to hone in and focus on, you know, what really is postpartum depression in dads and when do we see it and why is it so important that we catch it and treat it and take care of those men, take care of those dads, take care of those husbands. Because me, for one, being a mom, and especially a mom of multiples, a mom of triplets, I know that if I did not have my husband, now mind you, my entire family like came and helped out, my my parents, my sister and my niece, my in-laws came and helped us out after the babies were born. I'm so grateful for that. But it was truly, truly my husband who was my rock that I stood on. Of course, God, let me tell you something. Talk about prayer when I was pregnant. I prayed so hard. I literally prayed so hard that the pregnancy would go well. And thank God it did and that the delivery would go well and thank god it did and that my postpartum um you know time would go well and it did but my husband was so supportive to me that you know if my husband was going through something it would have been difficult to for him to support me because how can somebody who's going through something mentally emotionally or even physically support somebody else during a time like that and you know i'm speaking from experience with three babies but it's okay it doesn't even have to be three babies even just one i always tell parents because when um parents of babies that i take care of in my practice they're like oh my goodness i don't know how you did it with three and i'm just like listen even with one, I give kudos to every single mama out there. So no matter if you have one baby, two baby, three babies, those mamas who have like nine babies, I mean, kudos to all, mamas, to all the parents out there who are doing their thing because it takes love, it takes determination, it takes tenacity, it takes steadfastness, it just takes perseverance and patience at the end of the day to get through with these kids, right? So going back to this postpartum depression in dads. Now, again, I just want to clarify that myth that postpartum depression is not only exclusively to mothers. Postpartum depression can happen in dads. Yes. And again, you heard me correctly. And again, we don't talk about this because we normally just talk about postpartum depression in moms and not dads. But what really happens during this time? I mean, what really triggers it? And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to share, you know, with you what this is. Now, essentially, we know that with postpartum depression in women, usually we see it after the delivery. So say you have a mom, and even as a pediatrician, we screen moms at the baby's checkup, even though we're, we may not necessarily, in my case, I am blessed enough that because I'm med peds and able to see both adults and kids, a lot of my baby's parents, um, I do get a chance to see, and they are my patients, so I have a better rapport with them, a better relationship with them, but if it's not my patient, you know, you still want to screen and just ask them, you know, how are you doing? Do you have the right support? Are you feeling down? Do you feel motivated to get up? And take care of the baby are you getting enough sleep are you getting are you eating enough are you drinking enough do you feel like hurting yourself do you feel like interacting with the baby because listen what happens in postpartum is that you know moms and dads just you know shy away from their baby can you imagine this time where you just want to hold like i love babies love them love them love them part of the reason oh i clicked the wrong button part of the reason why 
I am also a pediatrician is because I just love babies. And one thing about them is that my visits, I always tell my patients, parents, I get a couple of minutes of like TLC, like Dr. D totally gets TLC time during these visits. And, you know, can you imagine missing out on that time because you don't even feel, you're like, eh, the baby's there. I don't even feel that motivation, that connection with that baby. Can you imagine that? And we don't want, we don't want to miss that time with our children. We don't want somebody else. We don't want a mom. We don't want a dad to miss that time. Also, it's for the safety of the child because sometimes what happens in postpartum depression, the child may not get the needed attention. But I just want to tell you that even in studies, it has shown that one in 10 dads, up to one in 10 dads, according to a study, shows that they suffer from post- part of depression. That's one in 10 dads. One, oh, I said one in five, <laughs> my fingers, one in 10, one in 10 dads. So can you imagine if your child's in a classroom, the average public school classroom is about 25 to 30. So that means approximately two to three children in that classroom's father, if they have a newborn or something, may be suffering from postpartum depression. So what is postpartum depression? Now, again, you know, we always hear more about moms. So really on the mom side, what we see is that postpartum kind of kicking maybe about a week after they have the baby. A lot of times, of course, um, we may see signs and symptoms even earlier during the pregnancy, especially for people who already suffer from depression. But kind of that main time that we see postpartum depression is about four to six weeks after the delivery. And listen, this can last up to three months after the delivery. So you can have a baby who is three months and or two months, let's say, and a mama brings them in and she's still suffering from, from postpartum depression. So that's why it's so important for that to be screened. And mamas, even if that pediatrician is your baby is doctor, if you need to say anything, go ahead and say it to the pediatrician. They will reach out to o the OBGYN if let's say you missed your appointment with your OB or just, you know, something else is going on. Now, the difference with postpartum depression in dads is that a father's postpartum depression doesn't necessarily only occur postpartum, like after the delivery. A dad's postpartum depression, maybe another name, it should be called another name. A dad's postpartum depression can occur even in the first trimester of the pregnancy. Now, isn't that crazy that, you know, it can occur during the pregnancy? Yeah, like totally can. And part of it is you got to remember that, you know, when a woman's pregnant or even after they have a baby, where does the attention go to? A lot of the attention goes to the baby, right? I mean, you got to take care of this tiny little baby. You got to feed them every couple hours. If you're breastfeeding, if you're having to pump breast milk, I mean, for all my ladies out there who know what I'm talking about. I mean, I worked so hard. I remember by the time I breastfed my babies, I had to pump by the time I put them down, you know, clean out the pump, li literally, it was time to pump again, right? And my husband would leave me like in my pajamas for that day. And he would literally come back and I'd still have those pajamas on. And I'm just like, oh my goodness, I promise I was doing stuff today. It is, it is a crazy time. Now, imagine if you're kind of like that bystander. So again, I'm not meaning to call dads bystander because of course there's dads who are super duper involved. But of course, again, I mean, the dads aren't the one carrying the baby. You know, moms are doing that. So I mean, moms are having to go through whatever it is during the pregnancy and then afterwards because there is a different bond there. But what are some signs that we can see? So something that you need to be on the lookout. And again, one key thing is even during the pregnancy, you need to be on the lookout for it because like I mentioned, postpartum depression in dads can occur up to the first trimester, as soon as the first trimester of the pregnancy. But what are some things, signs and symptoms that people should be looking out for, for either prenatal 
you know, because again, it's before the birth of the baby or postpartum depression. So one thing is that they could start using drugs or alcohol. If you have a husband who, you know, maybe there's a bar in the house and normally once in a while he'll drink socially, but all of a sudden you dr see him drinking on a daily basis or he's drinking more. So that's a red flag. If you see that his mood is changing, especially if he is more irritable, gets angry faster, you know, gets angry at things that shouldn't be making him angry or haven't made him angry in the past, if he's not motivated, like if you had a dad who was a go-getter and then all of a sudden he is, he just doesn't feel that oomph. And I'm talking about, you know, you're pregnant or you just had a baby and you either need something, you want help with getting the baby's milk, changing the baby, or if again, it's prenatal um, depression in dad where, you know, mom has a craving. I mean, what dad isn't gonna go out and get it? So if you see those changes, also some things that if they want to hurt themselves or hurt anybody else, if you feel like they're isolating themselves more. So let's say you have a husband who's always been a talker and loves to hang out with his friends, has like set times that he hangs out or maybe a set time to hang out with you, but you notice that he may go in his office or all of a sudden he's watching more TV than usual and just wants to be by himself. He doesn't want to talk um, like he usually did. Uh, also, if he becomes very impulsive, again, going back to irritability, this like snap, that sudden like outburst, maybe you have some sometimes fathers who during this time, just because of hormones, and we'll talk about, you know, again, some reasons why people have this prenatal or postpartum depression, you know, they just get these snaps and they can have violent behaviors. Sometimes they can become abusive. And again, this is a total change from the person that you've known before. They could even start turning to other things. Like if they start all of a sudden working out more, they don't work out as much. Again, going back to that motivation. So that's something that's really important. And again, I'm not saying to go to your husband with like a fine tooth comb and ask him all these questions, but it is really important that you, if you notice those changes, you know, bring it up, bring it up with your OBGYN. If it's prenatal and you're still pregnant, obviously you probably haven't met your pediatrician yet, unless you have other kids who are seeing a pediatrician. Um, or, you know, if you feel safe enough in a situation to ask your husband, hey, is everything okay? Do you you know, want to come to visit with me, you know, so you guys can talk about those feelings a little bit more. So really important to get that out and really work on what is truly happening because just like in regular depression or even postpartum depression, you don't want this sitting dormant or just hanging out for long. So what are some reasons why there's postpartum depression? Again, today we're talking about postpartum depression in dad. So one, of course, research has shown hormones. So of course, fathers during pregnancy may have decreased testosterone. Some studies have shown. Mm, tricky because we know mama's hormones are all over the place. So it could be some sort of like um, sympathy <laughs> change or empathy change in hormones. Um, also, just so you know, if a wife or mom is depressed, a spouse or a husband or a father, they're at a higher risk of being depressed too. Because, you know, you don't know those things like birds of a feather flock together or like show me who you hang out with and I'll tell you who you are. You know, so if you're, if you are a mom or a pregnant individual who's suffering from depression, please know that there's a higher risk for your partner to also be depressed. Another reason is sometimes if you have a dad who just feels totally like an outsider, he doesn't feel, you know, connected to what's happening because let's say, you know, mom's pregnant. Mom may just innocently think that, you know, oh, why is dad going to want to come and do the baby registry with me or want to come baby shopping? But sometimes dads can feel left out. And a lot of times that feeling of, loneliness or isolation causes them not to feel worthy enough or may cause them to have, you know, bring down their self-esteem. So it's important moms that if you are pregnant, include your husbands, include the father of the baby. And, you know, if they say, oh, I'm not interested, but definitely go out there, step out and say, hey, do you want to come do this with me? 
of course, there's a higher risk of prenatal or postpartum depression in dads if there's a previous history of depression. So same thing for moms, like I mentioned before, that, you know, moms who have a history of depression are at higher risk of post, post, postpartum, excuse me, depression. So the same thing with dad. Any changes in the family? So of course, becoming a parent in itself is overwhelming. So that big change, so if you're talking to somebody who may be a single child, for example, and I'm not saying that only single children end up having this, but if it's just a situation that may be overwhelming or especially now during the pandemic, people have lost their jobs. Some people aren't financially as stable and a baby may be a total surprise. So, so these are things that, you know, include that you want to have those coping mechanisms, you know, because what dad doesn't want to be the breadwinner of his family. So that can definitely put pressure on dad. And of course, if they are not sleeping well, same thing with mamas, make sure you are sleeping well. But the same thing with daddy is, is that we have to make sure our dads are also getting a good amount of sleep. It is so, so important. So those are the things that we see that can potentially cause prenatal or postpartum depression in our guys. Now, again, how do we figure this out? So how do we find it out? So I'm giving you all these clues. Again, if you are pregnant, just be more mindful, have your radar out, you know, be more deliberate about you, what you do. Again, include dad. You, if he doesn't want to do it, that's fine. But, you know, just include him in a fun way, make him know that he's loved. And I bet you that will help you know, that feeling to be mutual, you know, that he is like, oh, she wants me to be involved. And, you know, she comes and she gives me this kiss or this hug all the time. I feel like I'm wanted again, remind him that he's needed during the pregnancy again, because if you remember kind of scrolling back to what I said, that a lot of times when we are pregnant as women, our attention goes to the pregnancy and we lose that that drive that we have to give attention to our spouses because you're so busy taking care of the pregnancy and trying to survive your pregnancy and the same way postpartum that you're so busy caring for the children that you know sometimes you forget about your significant other so definitely you want to make that something that's huge now the other thing is just you know we do do a postpartum depression screening, like I mentioned earlier as a pediatrician on our moms. Of course, the push now is to try and also screen dads to make sure dads are okay, dads are involved, that dads are not suffering from postpartum depression. So let's say we have somebody who we diagnose with postpartum depression who's a father. So what's the next step? So it depends on what situation we're in and how severe this prenatal or postpartum depression is. But of course, kind of the same thing for depression and postpartum depression in mothers that we usually do is therapy. So again, of course, talking to somebody and that could be on an individual level and that could be on a couple's level. Then maybe it needs to be couples therapy because again, we talked about our risk factors. If you have a significant other who is depressed, there's a higher chance that there may be prenatal or post partum paternal depression so maybe couples therapy is something that would be bigger of course medication these again are things that you would have to speak with your physician with again if it is dad which we are talking about dad having postpartum depression you he needs to see his own physician he should not be taking medication that's mom's. It shouldn't be like, oh, well, mom suffers from depression, you know, and I'm just going to take some of her medication. No, 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 no. Our makeup, our hormones, things that are different in our body. So don't go taking somebody else's medication. And of course, other coping mechanisms that can be tried. So physical activity, um, calming meditation activities like some massages i mean who doesn't feel better with a massage like i said spending more time together you know being more deliberate about what you do and how you do it with each other so i hope this was helpful again today as i talked about postpartum depression can happen in dads too definitely a myth that it only affects mothers we're seeing it more and more again with the rise of depression we're just seeing 
more and more and more and more and more. You got that? Do you see any more <laughs> listening? Um, so awesome. If you have any questions about postpartum depression, feel free to drop them. You can email me at drmomshow at gmail.com. Um, of course, I'm not going to do the uh, empowerment challenge to myself, of course, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I think the big thing I want to leave with you today is just to remember that postpartum depression can happen in dads. So just keep your radar out and know that it's there. It can happen. So you want to be supportive. You want to be a supportive wife. You want to be a supportive um, family member, you know, whether you're a, a mom, dad of the father who will be having the baby. So you're like grandma and grandpa, soon to be grandma and grandpa. If you're a sibling, whatever it may be, if you're a best friend, you know, get those support systems out there. We should be supporting both mom and dad because again, postpartum depression not only occurs in mothers, it also occurs in dad. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dr. Mom Show. Again, just get your radars out there. Just trying to give you some evidence-based medicine. Thank you again for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review of this show on Apple Podcasts. Also follow me on Instagram at Dr. Mom underscore show. Or if you're a Facebook fanatic, you can follow me and like my page at the Dr. Mom Show. And of course, the Dr. Mom Show does have a YouTube channel, so feel free to check it out. Of course, I just want you to know that my daughter did my eyes today. It has sparkle on it, of course. You know, every girl needs a little sparkle in her life. So if you're listening to the podcast, definitely check out the Dr. Mom Show on YouTube so you can see my sparkly eyelids because, again, my daughter, Lena, did my eye makeup. And if you want to find out more information about the show or even be a guest on the show, if you have a great story, you know, always connect with me on drdelinemuchalak.com. And that information is provided on the YouTube and the podcast page. And of course, don't forget that life is precious and priceless. You are amazing and you can do anything you put your mind to because you are a superhero. Just have faith over fear and God bless. And of course, I just want to pray with you today, the Lord today, if there's anybody having any issues with depression, whether it's just depression, prenatal depression, postpartum depression, whether they're a single individual, married, pregnant, a father, mother. Lord, today we declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength. And Lord Jesus, that your Holy Spirit will touch anyone who is suffering from sad thoughts, any thoughts of anxiety, any thoughts of suicide, any thoughts of homicide. Lord, just any low self-esteem, we come against it. And Father, we speak happiness. We speak your grace. We speak your love. We speak your joy, God. That during this time, Lord, this precious time, as for those who are having a baby who may be pregnant, God, we just declare that it will be such a happy, memorable time. And Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory and the honor. Amen. And of course, don't forget, as Dr. Mom always says, don't forget to wash your hands, kiss your kids, love your families, and say your prayers. Good night. Love from Dr. Mom. Thank you very much.